Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we are first going to create a master board using stencils and then we're going to take that master board and turn it into a craft fair mini composition books that pet lovers are going to love. So if you've got stencils that you haven't used or you've got new stencils, this is a great way to test them out. Grab a 11 by 17 piece of paper and start stenciling with black and white. This is going to add pattern to our background. It's going to peek through and basically it's breaking the page for whatever comes next. And, and quite honestly, I just wanted to play. I just wanted to have fun and I really didn't know what I was going to do with this master board. But that's the, when you're creating with a, a master board, it's just an all over creative process. Now some master boards, you can layer papers and, and different things. Here, I'm just layering stencils in different ways. And a master board is just something that the artist creates that is used as kind of insta backgrounds. I'll put a list to all the stencils that I've used here. We've got Peacock Feathers, this is Garden Gate, Numbers Jumble, uh, I believe Script Words. Now I decided that I wanted to put some neon on here. So I use Quinacridone Magenta and this yellow neon. I just wanted one color of neon and I thought when it would mix it would make kind of an orange, but it really didn't. But it just lights up the page when I mix it with that uh, blue turquoise from Amsterdam. And I love that pop of neon yellow that I see on this background. So I'm mixing and if I get a color that I don't like, like when I mix the neon yellow and the quinacridone magenta, I'm not too fond of that color. It's a little too, it's dolls for some reason. So I'm avoiding that. I love the purple that I get when I do the quinacridone magenta and the uh, green blue from Amsterdam. Now this page was not gessoed or anything. It's raw page, so it doesn't blend as easily as a page would if you had gesso on it. It's just raw carb copy paper. I wanted to add some more neon in some places, so I add white gesso, and then, of course, I didn't wait till it dried, and then I'm adding some more of that neon. And I'm just layering up the colors. And the reason I put gesso underneath is because the neon's very translucent. You wouldn't see it if I just put it on top of the other color. It wouldn't block through. Now I'm taking some of the same stencils. This is that Garden Gate stencil, one of my favorites, and I'm using white. My background got very dark, so I'm adding white, and this is lightening and brightening it up. My only goal here is to have creative fun. And I know I'll be done when I like what I see. I like having used it with the dark, with the black, and now with the white. I like seeing the same pattern. This is retro bursts and I'm doing it with that green blue. I just want a lot of pattern on this. This is hand cut blossom and I'm just doing part of it with the quinacridone magenta. Not seeing a lot of it, but when you take the master board and you're cutting it up, you're going to see bits and pieces. Now, I'll be honest, at this stage, I wasn't really happy with it. But then I grabbed the white and using this hand cut blossom stencil, just adding more layers. And here's that magical thing that happens when you stencil with white over top of the bright colors. It just lightens everything up and just brings everything into focus somehow. It just turned the page that I wasn't happy with to something. It was like, yes, now I like it. 
And I kind of wish I'd stopped there, but then I thought I needed a little more contrast, so I grabbed this screen view stencil and black. Love this stencil. I think I needed to do less of it. But hindsight's always 2020. Now I have this composition book template. These are these mini composition books and I'll put a link to them because you can get them on Amazon. And I'm just being selective about what I want for the cover. So sometimes I want to maximize how many things I'm getting out of my master board. Here I'm being selective and picking something that I think is going to look good. I want a background and, or a front and a back to this. Now, when I do these for craft fairs or just to give as gifts, I tend to do it assembly line. So I'll cut up all the backgrounds, then I'll cut, then I'll glue them all down, then I'll worry about focal images and sentiments. And you're going to see a bit of that. Here I'm putting, gel medium on the book and putting the master board and using a brayer to make sure I have good adhesion. Once I cut this off the, the excess and I like having a little bit extra because it just gives you that margin of error. I just check to make sure all the edges are adhered, add a little bit of glue if I need it. So now I'm going to speed up the video when it's a repeat of something that you've already seen. But I am being selective. I'm trying to pick something that's rather nice for the front. And I also want to get different fronts for each of the books. And because this is a master board and there's elements that are similar throughout it, no matter what you pick for the back and the front, it's going to go together. So here I'm just doing the assembly line thing, putting all, gluing all the papers onto the front and the back of this mini composition book. Now I'm worry, working on the focal images and I'm going to use Tim Holtz's Crazy Dogs and Crazy Cats. I'm figuring out the size. Some of them are bigger and smaller and I, there's not a lot of room on these composition books. Then I'm grabbing the stamping platform and I'll put a link to this if I can find it or an alternate. This helps because you can stamp more than once and get a nice dark stamp. Open it up and it doesn't move. You get it exact. And for someone that's stamping challenged like me, that's important. Then I decide, you know, I'm going to put all of these on and apply it at once. Make sure your stamp pad is juicy and press down. There it's lighter, so now I'm gonna add some more ink. This is archival ink. And then press. Often I will then go and do some more stamping and I then those go into my stash. Once I have everything out, I figure let's just add to the stash. Now I'm going to cut out these animals and I am leaving a little bit of white on that sometimes I do sometimes I don't I'm not a big fan of it but because the background is really busy I thought okay we can have some of this edge on here and no I don't show you me cutting out the entire all four of these
And then I'm trying them on the composition book. I go to my sentiment pack and I have one called Pet Talk, which are things your cats and dogs and birds could say. You could also have people saying them. Now I showed you the original size, but you can print them, you can resize them. You can print four on a page, you can print two on a page and get the exact right size to match whatever you're doing. Because I'm working on this mini composition book and mini being the operative word, I want, I don't want the sentiment to take up all the space. I do want to see some of that background that we created in that master board. Now I'm cutting, cutting some of the sentiments apart. If you're interested in purchasing my sentiment packs or getting a closer look at them, you can go to ninnies.com, ninniesnapkins.com. I'll put the link in the description box. Now I'm going to colorize these animals. But what I'm doing first is putting a coat of white gesso. And the reason I'm putting white gesso down is because I'm going to be using my ink tense blocks. You could use pencils as well to colorize it. Ink tense is ink and it is permanent when dry as opposed to watercolor, but it works much the same as watercolor. So here again, I'm putting white gesso down. I don't want these markings on this, on this cat. I'm actually making these as gifts for people, and I have pictures of their pets, their cats and dogs, and I am painting them to match as closely as possible. Now here I'm taking some of the ink tense blocks and mixing it with the white gesso. That softens it, gives me different tones of the same color, and then I just paint it right on to my stamped image. Now, because you're adding gesso, you're going to lose some of that line work. And I apologize, this is out of frame. I do show them me colorizing some of them up close and it's in frame. So I mix the ink tense block with the gesso. There's a couple colors and there we go. And then I come in with some more gesso to lighten and brighten. This, of course, is a Siamese cat. I believe the coloring. And I'm working off that picture to do. And then I'm adding some shading. And I'm using the ink tense blocks much the same way as I use acrylic paint when I'm shading using that angle brush. And it works just the same. Because once it's wet, basically it's ink. So even though this was a tabby cat, as a stamp, it no longer has those tabby markings. Just mixing up this cat had blue eyes, so I'm mixing the ink tense blocks again. It's a flatter finish than the acrylic paints, which is why I like it. Now this cat is actually white. It's going to stay white, but I am doing some shading with gray. Again, the ink tense block, you can see it there. Just adding my shading in there. And the stamps, the Tim Holtz stamps have like line work that shows where the shades, shading should go and you can just follow that or go on your own.
Now it, you can just leave it on the paper and cut it out after you paint it and that's what I've done here. So I've added, I'm using white gesso at the same time as the two colors on there. So instead of mixing it with the gesso, I'm kind of putting the gesso and then getting some off the ink tents block. Add more gesso, it lightens, add more color, you get a darker color and you get all the different tones and shades that you want. And again, I keep looking over at my picture. Want it darker, get more ink from the block, rub, rub longer on the block. If I was deciding between the pencils and the blocks, I would get the blocks. They are much more usable, I find, for mixed media. I'm just using my Posca pen to color in the nose. And this dog in real life has big black eyes, very little white. So I wanted to change that up. And then in the picture I had, it was wearing a blue bandana. So added that. And I just want to add a little more color and shading. So I put a coat of gesso on here and then I'm just mixing the two colors of Inktense blocks and then adding more gesso as I go. Again, I'm using the Inktense block because when I go to glue these down and I'm putting wet medium on top to glue it down, I don't want it to reactivate. So if I used a watercolor water soluble product or watercolor that reactivates, I would run into problems. It would smear. Whereas this, once it's dry, is perfectly good. I'm just adding some more shading. And this time, I, I guess some time had lapsed here and I just grabbed my black acrylic paint to shade with. So now that they are all painted, I am going to finalize my choice, the composition, the sentiment that goes with the animal. And I tried to match it again to the characters of the animals from what I know. And the white cat has pink ears and pink nose. So I put it on the most pink background. And then I'm giving a good coat of the fluid matte medium right on top. I really want this all glued down. So because this in all likelihood is going to end up in somebody's uh, purse, knapsack, and you want it to last. So here's the assembly line. So do all the painting. Now I'm doing cut, gluing all the sentiments on. And then I'm shading around them with black acrylic paint. Make a sand out from the background. And then I add some line work with my Posca pen with my Secura glaze pen. I actually liked using the Secura glaze on them because it is dimensional 
and glossy. And it just adds that little extra something. So here's the Secure Glaze. It just makes it pop, put the line work back in place, and makes the focal image stand out. Outlining the sentiment and around the book. I also do the back. Doing it very sketchily. I'm not trying to be perfect because I can't be. So around we go. I'm just outlining the back here as well. And then I'm going to splatter the fronts and the back with gold. And there we have the finished product. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, go get creative.